Hello everyone and welcome back to PGL Tavern Tales here in Bucharest. I'm Raven and casting the next match on the couch is going to be Nimsh and special guest caster Tice. How are you doing today Tice? You've been enjoying the game so far? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, helping uh, life coach a lot, like preparing for the matches. We did already you know, even some games uh, before uh, the day. <laughs> so I'm just uh, doing, uh, doing my thing and uh, as a team just trying to, even I'm out of the tournament, still doing the best. Yeah, it's something that's really like mm. stuck out from you guys that you've been mm. talking about pretty much all weekend where it's like you said, you know, you practice for pretty much a week mm. straight and uh, really tried it as a mm. team. And mm. uh, the next match is obviously going to be your teammate, Life Coach versus Six. So, so a bit of a battle of the Titans, really. Do you think uh, from you, the preparation mm. you've done with Life Coach that he's got a really good chance here or do you think Six or might be a bit of a tougher point in terms of like deck choices and lineups? Uh, deck choices and lineups is definitely going to be a close one, this mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Also, already from the start, um, when there were some uh, six who first picked the Paladin, what well, was not something that is that used uh, or that, that we are that used to, with the, as you see here with the Shaman, the Druids, and everything available. And uh, yeah, Life Coach also being able to pick and Warrior and Druid was a little surprising. Yeah, that's that's actually super surprising mm. because normally those classes are banned and. Uh, you don't have a chance to mm -hmm. get through at least uh, one of the top four classes, but uh, six O bands a priest. So yeah. priest band, everybody was uh, <laughs> super hot on priest. Everybody was saying priest and having success yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. And also, why pick paladin as the first pick? It's not like paladin's going it's, to um, get banned. It makes a little sense against the lineup we are having here. Um, it, uh, we are having a lot of um, things are more teched for the aggressive matchup. Also, our priest just is actually doing really well here. <laughs> so it's not that it is. Uh, if you like. Um, go with the Shaman, go with Hunter, then yeah, then suddenly Priest actually becomes good. And yeah. you see that uh, in a lot of games happening here where the first pick is a Shaman, the second pick uh, might be a Hunter or something related to that, but it's just a fine matchup for Priest. And even Priest, I still consider it not being like that strong at all. This is a format where if you just use it to be two specific decks or three specific exactly, decks, yeah. it can really I mean, we just really had Crane shine. pretty much say the same thing, where it's yeah. like the deck okay. or the class as a whole, mm -hmm. it, you know, in Hearthstone still isn't great, mm -hmm. but when you can really target specific uh, classes or decks, you mm -hmm. can, re you know, it can get some work done. Cause I think if you build a deck with any class with a specific target mm -hmm. in mind, yeah, you're going to get some mm -hmm. wins. But yeah, overall, uh, the, sh the Paladin pick to start off with 6 so seems like it's going to be a good choice. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did actually have Warlock and what was it? Rogue, was it? Paladin Wallet Rogue for 6 I the think. The thing is... We were saying in the beginning of the day today that Druid is the class to pick. Nobody's banning Druid, what's happening there? And I believe Sixo didn't pick Druid, and Druid was not banned for him. Um, no, nah, Druid was not banned, but he didn't pick it. Yeah, so this Druid. is like the floating class. He just <laughs> decides not to play Druid in this mm -hmm. match. There is, there is a lot going on, I have to say, in this pick and ban phase now, where at first you don't know what the deck list are. Now everybody has also access to the deck list, mm -hmm. and you see that has a lot of influence. And yeah, you also try to get an edge somehow. And yeah, if you are always do being uh, really, really predictable, yeah, then you will never get an advantage. Yeah, and also as well, we've seen uh, what's been interesting mm -hmm. to me is from the beginning of the tournament mm -hmm. to even today, the evolution of the ban pick strategies, even though there's differences like knowing the deck list and not knowing them, but even in general, just the approach to mixing it up a little bit, because I'm sure that all the players have gone into it the very, okay, so in general, I'll ban this, mm -hmm. and then, you know, build off that with like, the, you know, the tree scenario we've been talking about. And and yeah, it's kind of cool to just see everyone alter their approach and see six obviously not taking the druid, but looks like the guys are ready. They've done their mulligans. It's going to be life coach versus six o, and the winner will go home. Uh, the loser will go home. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that, 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 we're, we're twisting the rules. Hopefully but, uh, he will not. <laughs> but no, enjoy the game, guys. Yeah, thanks so much, Raven. All right, guys. So we have this druid versus rogue. Who, who won the mind games here with the first pick? Um, we'll say. Um, <laughs> it's already b normally I would say this is a close one. I definitely favor uh, the guy here on the coin, not necessarily because I want the druid to be on the coin, but you don't want to have the rogue the, uh, on the coin. I think um, it's an, um, a little bit in the favor of the druid already, and with also being on the coin, I think it quite quite favors druid. So also the question because a lot of players they brought Malagos, um, Yogg, Saron, Druid, and you guys brought uh, the token, right? So everybody in the mm -hmm. team brought the token druid. Uh, yes, we have like uh, more token druid. It still plays like with the giants. It's like such an insane card in druid. It's for sure um, the deck where the giant actually makes uh, the cut, and it's it's just uh, all the tokens. It can actually maybe not against rogue, but in general floating the board. Sometimes it can be scary against like a hunter or rogue, but other classes can definitely also be great. For example, Mirror Match. 
So I guess preferred it uh, to the Malagos. You just felt like it counters the matchups you are targeting a bit better than the Malagos, ro Malagos uh, Druid? Um, I have to say we are also we're not... Um, I'm a little bit surprised how well the Malagos Druid uh, especially does here. I didn't expect it to have this kind of a power level. Um, but yeah, it's actually really good for mirror matches, like people cut mulch, but if you have a mulch and you have tokens, well, that suddenly becomes really good in the in the mirror match. And this is why, um, yeah, Druid is still not the, the deck we kind of that are that scared for also with the Shaman. Uh, we are feeling pretty solid there. And yeah, so m that's why maybe pe people just don't pick it even anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes uh, sense. Like, well, that's why Sixo probably didn't yeah. pick the Malagos. All right, mm -hmm. so it was a really nice opening from Life Coach that innervate and coin on the Violet Teacher. Now he can just follow up with double Raven Idol if he wants to. Depends what he gets from the first yeah. one. Unless, uh, do you go for Power of the Wild here? Just like a free two Panther? Mm. Are you afraid of Fun of Knives? Like, Fun of Knives can happen. If if, if it happens, Violet Teacher still stays on board, but you are going to lose the tokens. I think this attack spoilers a lot, that there will be something with poor damage. I don't see any reason why this attack vault uh, happen like there is also cards like Shadow Strike that are suddenly not available anymore. Yeah. So I really feel this spoilers. Also, backstep cannot be. It really spoilers for me in a fist rate and uh, not a sap or anything. So yeah, I don't see much reason to make the pop the alt. I kind of like the the double Raven. The idol Raven maybe. idols. If you can pick up and innovate, it's like uh, out of one of oh. the two Raven oh. idols, it's super disgusting. Yes. So super Rogue normally does not have mm -hmm. a comeback mechanism to deal with that kind of opening. No Innervate yet. Uh, he gets Savage because he is building up the board right now. Can he get an Innervate here? No. no. <laughs> Ooh, the Golden Moonblade portal looks pretty amazing. Roots is nice say. specifically also because mm -hmm. you can play it next turn and get three tokens and power yeah. the wild. If there is no fan of knives, it suddenly becomes uh, really strong. So are we, fo are we forced to Cold Blood Eviscerate? Um, I, I think, yeah, I guess so, yeah. There is no fun of knives, there is no way to... With playing a trader up here, you are not really getting anywhere. You still don't have your access to fan of knives, so yeah. I think it is uh, quite needed. Also, you see the life total at turn 3, already going to 23, so... What do you think about this rogue with questing adventurers? Well, obviously you guys brought a different kind of rogue with um, anti-aggro approach. It's uh, not... It's, uh, it's just more on uh, a miracle rogue, but uh, plays a little bit the hand easier away. Uh, I can see questing being an uh, okay card if you buff it already twice in some way. But it's uh, it's already in four four and it keeps uh, growing, so it's an uh, it's an okay uh, tech card. Card still in general feels a little weak. That's why it might still uh, preference yeah. call basically, and also probably depends on the matchups you're targeting with the deck. I would say, like, with Questing Adventure, then you just don't want to go file a teacher. Uh, Burke so you have too many tools to get away from your gadget set, where yeah. you want to keep the, all your cards also for. And I still, I, yeah, I, I'm, like, maybe personal preference, but I really like a teacher uh, in Rogue still. Here, an easy decision, more or less. Uh, I would like Power of the Wild here as well, because you play around a possible Fun of, knife, uh, fun of Knives draw, and uh, having this kind of uh, board makes uh, makes even more aggressive, then on the next turn you can Savage Roar either, or you can Feral Rage, depends what happens there, what shows up. That backstab Ooh. is super good. Yeah. Oh man, he because he didn't have an activator for SA7, and suddenly, not only he has an activator, he can deal with two of the two dudes. So Lifeco is throwing a lot of his spells here now. Um, I think uh, like both players have to play their hand really fast because uh, Life Coach takes a pretty aggressive approach. So maybe there is just a reason to keep continuing while it might be, I would say, not really likely there might be a fan of knives. So you can really still consider playing this Living Roots just on board to use the Feral Rage also aggressive to keep that aggressive s uh, roar in the hand, keep that aggressive swipe. You, you are going a little all in. I like it because you are expecting an Azure Drake next turn. So if you go for like. You haven't seen Pillager. Would you play Pillager if you had Pillager? Probably. Mm. But even if Pillager, there, there isn't the hand. Like basically on turn five, you hope there is no fun of knives, and that mm. there is a big drop that that will not make the rogue make the weapon to kill one of the, of the one ones you have. So I like definitely this this line. And nothing else is really that good because Swipe will only help the strategy of just building up the board, having maximum value of Savage and then finishing things off with Swipe.
Okay, so yeah, six oh not having too much options here. I mean, there you can go questing adventure if it's here, but I feel it's really a poor play. And I don't think it's going to win you the game here with having two really expensive cards or adventures only, only in 3 3. Azure Drake, is Azure Drake right. feels really needed for me here. So Life Coach right now has 8 plus 4, 12 damage with the Savage mm -hmm. Roar, 13 with the Hero Power. Can put 6 0 to 6. At a pretty good position. I feel like uh, if you now don't take the Roar value now, might be really hard to get it off later. You already had uh, Root, you had the power of the wild, the teacher already went, so definitely, like, if you want to play it, you want to play it now. And do you go all in uh, or do you trade the 4 2 and the 4 4? At this, at this point, you put your opponent down to 6 and you have to swipe and you have the hero power. Yeah, I think you can uh, also 6 horse version is not running Earth and Rain. Yeah. So. Two hero powers in the win, no taunts, yeah, and no and heal. There still need to be that board clear, so it's a little bit tricky, I have to say, with like leaving an Ezra Drake up. It's not the main you want to leave up. But with this hand, I don't see, I don't feel there is much punishment. I like going yeah. for a face here fully, especially and because of the swipe. And there is no heal. Like it's, <laughs> it's We know the decklist, there is no heal. And so. no taunts. Um, no, no taunts. So it's just going to be in two turns, Six is just going to die. It's yeah. He cannot stop the swipe. And I don't see any point in any combination how in two turns life which will die. Not to mention that uh, from Sixo's perspective, he can't really mm -hmm. even play around the swipe. At this point, you are so far behind that you will have to make some risks to get the board back. Yeah, uh, it's just yes, Sixo yes, just right. having a little bit poor uh, ways of dealing with the board uh, this game. And you see that there even has to be like the dagger trade happen. And that is just going to be directly lethal then, I would say, here for life coach. Yeah, life coach is already mm -hmm. throwing a well played right now. Five damage. Yeah. Pretty fast game. Yeah. There's even an innervate that's not needed here at all. Sixo mm -hmm. uh, lost 0 3 to Tessin, who was playing Hunter. And now he's losing to Life Coach first game, so this means he is 0-4 today. Would that affect his mindset? Um, I think 6-0 is strong enough to like not that affect too much. It's a matchup that is close, um, and definitely a little bit maybe in favor for 6-0. And, well, Druid can just be like... Um, it, it can just snowball so hard, like Druid has the power to... Um, it's so interesting that Druid is like the deck that can put the power on the board and still is also able to just um, deal with uh, the opponent's power by playing it from all the game behind. You can also play yeah. Druid from just play your spells and play it from behind, but this is a match where you can also be aggressive. So, really nice uh, mid-range deck there, just being so solid overall. Also, I think that was the fastest life coach game I've seen in my life. Well, I will disagree. <laughs> I have seen some fast ladder games lately uh, from him uh, when uh, when there was like a race going on. But besides <laughs> that, besides <laughs> that, yeah, it was. Uh, so you're <laughs> jumping on a bun. Where, when is the bungee jump? Yeah, it's going to happen next week. Are yeah. you going to shave your head as well? No, no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm bungee jump is already <laughs> enough, man. I don't have to. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, definitely not too excited, but a little bit. So it's. I hope it's just. This people say it's cool, right? On that I mean one, <laughs> yeah. Well, it should. It should be fun. It should be fun. Yeah. And but with rope this time, right? Yeah. You're not. W you're not doing it without the rope. No, and I don't like let let life coach be uh, touching the rope, but like they have an <laughs> they have an interesting relation. They uh, the rope and life coach. So I'm not gonna really. As long as he's not out there on the rope, then I'm... Uh, Fingers crossed uh, that we will see you at the uh, World Championship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be fine. All right. So we have this Druid stays because this is last hero standing versus Zoo. And um, I believe this is an okay matchup for Zoo. Uh, Zoo can be really aggressive. But uh, Strifecore, for example, uh, at Seastry Cup, he disagreed. He said that uh, Zoo, that Druid has, an, mm. has a slight advantage. What do you think? I think... Um, I Shot, shot be still a bit in favor for the zoo. It's like a little bit more inconsistent now with what the zoos are running, uh, where the discards are not often that great against um, Druid. But as I said, like Druid has just so many spells that can they can just start with the spells in the mid game. You're gonna try to um, yeah play your bar play maybe in Sylvanas, and there there are just a lot of ways to deal with it. Um, but I would still like Zoo can be really aggressive, yeah. and if there are not. You have to play really well on curve to handle the zoo well, and if that's not going to happen, you're going to have a hard matchup. I really like the play from Sixo, by the way. A lot of players would just go for Coin Void Walker to play Dire with Valfon 2 and then play Imp Gangboss mm -hmm. on 3. 
but he he realizes that if Gangboss is so good versus Druid early it's as well. It's not that good I against Druid, I feel. I, I, I often agree with like, coining England was, but I don't know if it's that good against Druid. So. Well, anymore or like overall? Yeah, just overall, I mean... Well, there is like mulch is the best answer, but normally there is no mulch, so it's really hard to, mm -hmm. to deal with it. Now with the Councilman, you can obviously go Councilman instead. <laughs> Like, I've seen a lot of times people just uh, coin Imp Gang Boss in this matchup specifically because it's so hard to deal with it. Like, you can't rough it, you can't really live in Cruz it. So, you get that early advantage on board and then you can use it with Imp, with uh, Daru Falfa and Juggler. Yeah, the Imp Gang Boss is definitely a little bit annoying for the four drops where they are having three attack, but afterwards, the, most of the minions like a war. Like, it doesn't matter, he, the, he has to PO or soul fire it anyway yeah. and trade it in. So, uh, yeah, of course, Imp Gang Boss is just so strong. That uh, uh, it will always be good uh, around turn two or around turn three. Consumer is something you have to respect. Uh, it's not something you want to leave up. I feel also curve is a little bit rough here for our life coach. So definitely, there are not that many good targets too. Um, Milt, so well, if Gangbos, well basically the free drop is one of the best targets you can have. It's either Im Gangbos or Consumer, and then late game if you get the mulch, probably uh, Doomguard because right now the zoo doesn't run Sea Giants anymore. So now we also see that Twilight Drake can also actually fit pretty it's decently good. in this matchup. I won't mind it at all. Like Absolutely. there is no silence or something. But uh, Sixo if says it's time and wants to take a little bit more aggressive approach, not playing the in gang boss on curve and playing two minions. Pretty well, interesting. Now Right now it's because of the swipe, so like if he plays in gang boss, I guess you can swipe it and kill more or less an, an empty board. And with this, if you swipe it, like it's it's a weird board to swipe. Mm. Yeah, so I think Imgang Boss will definitely be in what weak turn here. It's also still like the Giants can be amazing, but, but them together in a starting hand or around turn four is just not going to be great. And the Varus also doesn't find any place, can be placed next turn, of course. So, yeah, you look in this ref, and not much you can do with the ref here, but Would I you guess we definitely have to play it here. Hmm. Yeah, you definitely play the ref, but how do you play it? Do yeah, you, you have just to ref. Cycle or no. No, kill the kill the juggler. This is too much damage. Yeah, coming. build juggler hero power and go for innovate bar next turn. I would say. Yeah, that sounds good. So Do you even attack the void walker with the hero power? Probably, <laughs> probably not. You don't really care too much. Hmm. It seems like it doesn't matter that it has damage on itself. And this is kind of the thing with them bar. Like you don't you don't care much what he plays. They have to just put the ten damage in. How they want to do it? Yeah, like this. I mean, at the end, it's only one damage you take, but and one damage can matter against you. <laughs> yeah, it can matter, and specifically because you probably want to do something else with this Voidwalker, like maybe kill it with a minion. So now it's pretty interesting here from like, <laughs> are you going to play the Twilight Drake from a zoo here? Or Why not? Yeah. It's a 4 or 5. Uh, it's a Yeti. It's, it's a, a Yeti. With the Yeti. And now we play the Yeti with, uh, with double health here. <laughs> the 5-10. <the five five ten. Ten. <laughs> And not only that, we also and reduce the cost of the Arcan Giants. But this is just like Angel Bar is just a really good card against Zoo. Like you ask the Zoo to deal ten damage in your card, and there is no silence. There is no silence, and ten damage is just a lot. It often like has to. It comes also always it co if you have like one way of ramp or you have an inner fade. It just comes a little bit early, and it you ask a lot where they normally want to the vendor of Orgas or like tap like it, it suddenly it might be even better now than before because right now we don't play forbidden ritual and with ritual you could find that damage with ritual and daru alpha so you could actually just run small minions into ancient of war and right now we don't have the ritual so basically you just need the physical minions that are getting into it you still run po's in those decks but so yeah six are not really having the way of even dealing with it now so it suddenly becomes a little bit. Also, the Twilight Drake just get covered. Covers uh, the war. The war covers the Drake so perfectly. So you have to. Do you have to Doom Guard this just to have mm. a board? And I don't like the Doom Guard. I will definitely do this. So you go with uh, Malzeras Imp and Doom Guard next turn. Kay. Yes, you discard two cards, but you also draw two cards. cards. So the there is a lot of um, where the Doom Guard benefits. Azure Drake is quite nice. You will be able not only to play a minion, you can living roots the two three and attack into the two two, dealing with uh, a big part of the board, dealing with the buffer. You can also just uh, living roots here the die wolf and only take one damage from the void walker. I'm preferring that a little bit more. 
now he, it feels like he wants to make a trade in the Drake. Because otherwise it was just always... That you wanna might, might be a small misplay there. You just want a Living Roots to die roof and take the one damage from the Void Walker. Like it's now it just cover, it gets perfectly covered on board, so I cannot really... I, do, I don't feel you can get away by trading the Twala Drake here. Uh, I think you still trade the Dire Wolf. It's yeah, just, you like, the, 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 f the, mis the misplay <laughs> was based on the fact that you feel like Void Walker has free health, mm -hmm. so you need to deal free damage to get full value out of Living Roots. Mm. Yeah. But it works like the other way. It's just how can I, how can the Ward take less damage? Yeah. And you obviously like your play was superior. So, yeah, the Doom Guard, I mean, then you still have to trade two away. Like, now, actually, because of the slight unfortunate trade there from life, because the die wolf becomes pretty strong. Still want to drop the Doom Guard here directly. Yes, they're going for the card draw and the bigger board. Yeah, it's, I don't know, man. It's The trade is so bad here. Um, you don't really deal with the 4 4 as well. You will be able to it's attack face. But and also, the Drake just covers the. the. Imp Gang boss. The so Imp well. Gang boss. Do you just kill the Imp Gang boss and slam an 8 8? Or do you just kill no. the 5 2 and slam an 8 8? I would like to make these giants still a little bit cheaper. The 4 attack from the Fell Rage can still go in the Doom Guard. I don't feel. What? You're not that pressured you with like health. With your health is. Actually, a little bit surprising, but this is the thing. If the druid just has a lot of spells in the early game and you can trade decently with the minions on board, you just don't take that much damage. <laughs> and yeah. So Violet Teacher with Feral Rage looks the best then? Yeah, because you, yeah, you, you develop a minion. You have for six health on the board also with the Teacher and with an 1-1. One -one that is almost as much. The health is something that matters more than the attack against Zoo. They just trade their themselves often with... Uh, so yeah, I like the. You make your. T you may also if you play this Feral Rage, it kind of gives you an innovate back or two coins, like on the giant. So it, it feels uh, a little bit more cleanly. You can. Oh, uh, I will probably ignore the. Yeah, you can ignore the. So he's mm. going for the imp to just like reduce yeah. the value that uh, Sixo is getting from the discard cards because if there is like another Doom Guard in the hand, he will be able to draw the cards again. Uh, he's seen one librarian discarded, I believe. And there were reasons to attack in the Imgang boss, but I really like the trade into the Doom God more just because uh, you give this Imgang boss, yes, it will gain value, but he can only attack one minion. It's not that he can abuse extra attack power into two minions. He can only deal with one. Plus, it's still minion trading, and you should be able to win minion trading because you have those Arcan Giants in the hand. Okay, this is interesting. We have here now the... So can pretty cleanly play his hand here. Ooh. Well, if a little you bit unfortunate there because there you prefer <laughs> to trade into the Ezra Drake. Yes, you can like go for it and hope that. <laughs> Do you go for a one one and get thirty four percent? I don't know about that one. <laughs> oh man, it's possible, but yeah, Sixo is just laughing because he <laughs> he's going for it. Can he hit the four one? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> wow. That was masterful. Uh, I actually don't mind this play at all because I feel you're getting into a bad spot and in bad spots, risky plays yeah, have, to take the risk. have to happen to like make that uh, make your possible own luck. comeback. And now <laughs> suddenly with this Asher Drake just being sniped away and not being traded away, board looks totally different. It's definitely favoring 6-0 with regards to board and now. And 8-8s eight can be great, but when you play against a deck with a lot of tokens they don't and have little taunt. sticky minions, yeah, but then they just do, they don't care about your 8 yeah. yeah, like This is a deck that doesn't like kill an opponent somehow from 20 lives that easy. Exactly. So like even if you play an 8-8, eight mm -hmm. eight, just they will just ignore it for now. Yeah. Well, it will be getting played here. There's not much better to do. You can Still, 8-8 eight eight is better than a 3-5. Yeah. And you can hero power as well. Oh, Would you so bad trade here, with this imp gang boss being on four HP? So if you're attacking to the imp gang boss right now, yeah, it's so tough because you, you just create tokens. You you bring more power to the board. The hero power also, like yes, you play the hero power is also not going to be used in this turn. So hmm. so you just play giant hero power, kill the two two maybe. Yeah, and hero power, not attack anything with the hero power. All right, so the giant is being dropped. Arcane giant, pretty good creature. We have how much power on board? This is five, six. 
nine. Yeah, I don't believe what your Doom Guard definitely in strong pickup here. Um, will be. I think we. Oh, you always want to be now. You want to like put be the aggressive player here. You can don't want to take it too long and just only discarding the a little bit slower in game boss, not the dream play. It's at this fine. Point. Might be you want to trade the steed your way. You can do it with the in game boss. Runs a little bit into swipe with depends everything. Depends on the knife as well. Like y you might start with the doom guard, see where the yeah. knife lands. If it knives the teacher, you can probably trade two one one. Here. Exactly. If it doesn't. There might st still be some merit into trading the 1-1 one, one and the 2-3 into it. Yeah, but uh, I just like slamming first, see what is uh, happening sure. here. Not getting the hits, can still go for the trade with the 3-4. Otherwise the giant just trades it so perfectly, right? Yeah, it does. That's that's why you want to you want to protect your Doomguard here. I feel you want you want to trade this teacher, right? Eh? I would really not like ignoring it. I would like to trade with the small guys, mm. because I want the giant to go into the Imp Gang boss and Doomguard mm -hmm. survive one more turn. I definitely like it. I mean, it's not likely there is a swipe for um, for our life coach after the last turn where they just came and ate it. But yeah, definitely still like this trade. Ancient of War is mm. really good. It's amazingly good, mm -hmm. because you not only can just play it as a big thing that blocks the attacks, also just kill the 3-4, and uh, you can kill one of the Imps with the hero power. Yeah, war is S, the first war already did a quite a good job. Second war, definitely <laughs> pretty good card against Zoo. And uh, this is a game where, like, double Doom Guard, really problematic card for Druid uh, facing a Doom Guard. But, um, yeah, Doom. Still, Life Coach is, mm -hmm. is in, uh, in a good position after playing this Ancient of War. Sixo will need to get some more damage to be able to go for it. Soulfire is a good start. start. Uh, I think you want to Soulfire the Taunt here. Like, there's no reason to. Do anything on the face here. You have a decent board, you still haven't draw. So this is in case that yeah. he gets another so fire. Yeah. Imp is just one damage somewhere. Alright, so he still gets some damage through. And uh, mm -hmm. his board is semi alive, but swipe yeah. Swipe can deal with uh with this board quite nicely. Uh, it's not that clear, it's just one for one and there still has to like hero power, the giant has to do something here. Well, he can um, uh, teacher swipe hero power and then yeah. the imp can, can be just left alive and I guess you go eight to face. It's, yeah, it's a little bit tricky now to leave a minion up, but the swipe here on the doom rat pretty, pretty good. If you hero power here, you go to five, so maybe you want to like, I will, I will probably just trade it to be honest, uh, double doom guard is gone. And the only way you might lose this... Well, PO is possibility, so you probably there should There is no PO in the deck, but oh, there, no PO in the deck, there okay. are cards like Petler that can sneak it out. There is a card like Soulfire that are still available that can... I feel there are quite some outs here, and uh, I think... No, ch no charge, next, right? Next turn, there are only going to be two cards. For, and you will always, with this board, be able to trade into two minions. There are no... Forbidden Rituals anymore in decks like Zeus. And so no more Doom Guards because we've seen two of them. Yeah. So if you keep board control, you should be able to win this. Mm -hmm. And they're, you're only going to face two minions. And you have two minions that are just really strong. And they will always find the trade. Petler being one of the better cards here. Uh, will either develop an extra minion. Oh, and ooh, fin oh. oh, I always was looking in the Finley. I was also looking at the Finley. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And that's the York Saron. Oh, I don't know about it here. Well, you got it. I mean, this LeBaron actually being a still a solid draw for uh, six O because it's gonna give three cards next turn for the zoo. Oh, yeah, it's actually well, a close call. Like this is not the case where you want the York. You prefer like just having a small taunt, even like a five. What do you, What do you taunt. think about the Worgen though, instead of Finley? Because you've mentioned there are no POs, so there's one more Dark Peddler in the deck. So yeah, well, there are cards like. Abusive. Uh, so their second soul fire. Yeah. So you you like with soul fire with um the, the peddler and something for damage you will be able to win with the worgen yeah. because there will be six health only. Yeah, and kind of cards and I think like double abusive and like it's like a little bit. Uh, it's definitely like it didn't help six or this turn too much, but it's actually setting up a lot. This Liberian, the the worgen, and also the the hero power that you gain from Finley. What do you even look for? Like hunter, but. Druid will always gain one HP, and here we go. And actually making the attacks first. Uh, making really attacks first, and uh, yeah, this is ballsy. Yeah, I don't know about this at all. Oh, wow, man. This panic mode. Is it, is it enough? Is it enough? I don't Redemption? 
No, yes, no, it's not enough. What is the secret though? Redemption, okay. Yeah, it's a pretty dead secret here. He will These have to draw are also and now he has to well, tap. if there is an extra oh. Oh, <laughs> all that one drops. He just didn't get it. Uh. Didn't get it. So flame him Jeff and Sixo loses wow. another game. Tyson, I have to ask you again. So right now he's zero five today. Does yeah. will that affect his Well medicine? that might actually affect <laughs> okay. you. That this is like uh if you go zero five, it's really like you get into a set point where it feels like nothing also goes your way. What kind of happened here the li last game? And yeah, it's going to be rough here. Um, now he has left the Paladin, what was his first pick. Um, makes a little bit sense for the lineup, but it's, it's not the, the, the deck I would say, yeah, that's going to like, can make, make the sweep that easy. It, yeah, the Paladin is uh, a very mm -hmm. good deck right now, but it's not something that just has uh, polarized matchups or like really... Uh, stable matchups, but again, like Druid is the deck of the of the match. We've, uh, we've we've been saying like Priest was a very good last match and uh, two two matches ago as well. But mm -hmm. Druid just comes back and uh, shows up that it's a very strong one. And not, not only Malika's Druid, this is this is the token Druid. So it seems like both builds are viable at the moment. Yeah, it's just a uh, a little bit about the class. Like the the things are not that much difference. This one I would say is better against Zoo because instead of the Meligos, you and meanwhile have this teacher, but does yeah. actually s a pretty decent job, and yeah, it sneaks out the win there. I mean, it was a really close one. And I have to say, like the 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 snipes on the Drake were definitely great, but there were also like some poor things. And at the end, like yeah, I think Engine of War actually changed the yeah. game uh, really heavily. That like the second Engine of War being there in that very moment stopped Sixo from dealing that da last damage he needed. Yeah. He has to deal 20 damage what he is yeah. what he did into the war. So it's just a lot of damage. And he had so Fire off the top. So with that Soulfire, he'll mm -hmm. be able to finish the game if the card will be different. What do you think about this matchup, though? So um, Life Coach got a, a quite nice start with the Wild Growth and Innervate. Uh, he also has some cool cards. But he will need to be aggressive. Because versus this kind of deck, versus Paladin, you don't want mm -hmm. to give it enough time. No. And you want to like ramp up a little. But um, it's... Paladin has really good ways of dealing with your ramp up, like the war. If it just gets, um, like if if it just Eldor it, it doesn't need like the, you need to pressure it. And the token version can do it a little with like power of the wild, but it can also get cleaned really easily. And I definitely feel this matchup is a uh, really close one. Yeah, Druid has to play his own game here. Druid is the is the um, is the deck that has to make the game and has to be like now proactive instead of. Reactive, what we saw against the zoo. And for Pal for Paladin, I think it should mm. be fine, more or less, because Druid is not that fast. If he ramps, as you mentioned, you have equality Pyromancer, you have mm. Doomsayers to stop the the critical turn as well, and you just mm. try to accumulate your stuff, to get to turn eight, play a big guy. If if you don't get the big guys, just get to the anything mm. can happen. Um, yeah, and the problems normally come here like once the like the first clears out, or and then the Druid goes a little aggressive or drops like his big minion. And then you you have to deal with it, and you, you, your resources are getting a little bit used. It's always a matchup that goes really grindy, goes to the later game. And so th and there is also a, the sleeper card. Well, sleeper card. It's Yoxaron basically. So yeah. you can play Yoxaron and it's you can get stuff that will win you the game. It can be a sneaky one. The, the one of the problems here for Yok is that. Um, you normally don't have much to play it into. Like, yeah, sometimes there is the Rek or the Tyrion, but there's not much where you're like, yeah, this is why I have Yoke in my deck. But you have a lot of time. You're going to play a lot of spells, so it will give you a lot, and you're hoping for him giving a little value to you. Well, still, like, even if you play Yogg later, if you have, like, 15-plus spells, there are some cer certain combinations of spells that can stop the combo. So, obviously, versus Murloc, there is um, a limited amount of damage you can deal, because the first anything deals, what, like, 12, and the second deals from 30 to 32. So, if Yogg gives you, like, a lot of armor, plus you have Feral Rages, or if you get, like, secrets, uh, like, Vaporize and, like, Ice Blocks, stuff like that, it can help you win the game as well, just block the combo and have the tools. I had it also, like, I, I like the uh, Paladin deck quite a lot. I find it a really interesting deck, and uh, I had it also once, a Druid. Meanwhile, and Tom big my Murloc, my 3-3. Three, three yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, so this combo is actually not enough anymore now, and uh, things can get really annoying sometimes. Then you uh, need to get the <laughs> third anything from Ivory Knight. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Like, one time I was playing, um, one of my war leaders got burned. With, like, it just got burned. I had that Acolyte of Pain, and I was still able to win because of the third anything. Mm. So here, um, Doomsayer doing a decent job, putting a little bit of tempo out of the game, where 
Well, I'm not that scared. The thing about Sixo is a little bit missing in his hand. It's like in true Vigil. silver. And Vigil uh, as well. Like, I, I guess having Vigil would be nice to just I get the I card. mean, the card works quite fine. But you like now you want to play the Ecoli, but it will work really well if there will be an Elder or something where you get it that instantly card draw. Um, but with no Elder and true silver, the trades will be a little bit poor uh, for Sixo. He might be forced to use equality earlier, but yeah. he has keeper of the keeper to actually deal with the five ten if it shows up right now. No consecration yet, but I, I think this is a decent spot for uh, the war. Like as a Drake will just die directly to true silver. Mm, it's it's on curve. Kind of wanna like it's not gonna it's gonna be you're gonna feel a little bit bad by running so hard in the elder here and also get punished by this acolyte, but. Well, th they're no, no better player, I guess. So I, I also like War here. And Azure Drake can be punished by like Blogil with War Leader as well, if, the, if if it's in the hand. Just like, play both trade, have a Merlock on board. So Ancient of War should be fine. Like, obviously, you can't get punished with a draw, but then what else can you do? So Ancient of War is there. Um, yeah, anything can happen. You can have two of these in the hand, but if you have not played any Merlocks, they are <laughs> list. Not gonna do the job for here, and it's actually it doesn't happen too often that you're so dead of and just don't have the ends for you. I'm even thinking mm. of like doing pyro shenanigans with the Ecolite to do more draw, but yeah, probably this Ulderman is a little bit more consistent. And you still have the second Ecolite in hand if you want to go for pyro shenanigans. Kind of says to life coach probably that there is no um, Elder, yeah, um, but yeah. I won't this trade you shall still make here into the Ecolite, otherwise the Ulderman trades it away and also True Silver getting a little bit painful now. You have so many targets now in Druid because before you had Ancient one Ancient of War, maybe maybe Onyxia, maybe Scenarius, but right now you have those two giants, you have those Ancients of War. So we have a lot of targets for Aldors specifically, you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah. well there were always also cards like Scenarius or uh, Onyxia that are gone now. And kind of the giants are fitting now a little bit that spot that are well that are strictly better though. Um, it's uh, also five of the four drops can be a little bit painful if you don't have a uh, minion and they put a five HP minion in. Well, it's just out of the range of true silver. No but one. yeah, it's a really matchup that goes to the to a little bit of the end of the deck. Normally it doesn't reach the end of the deck, but it goes pretty deep. Yeah, true. So it's like oh we're wow, just going for play the giant. I don't like it. I would also always play the Ezra Drake here. He's going for a giant. So is he going for the giant right now because he feels like there is no elder? There is no elder. There's and he wants to bait out equality, or maybe he even hopes there is no equality here. Hmm. Interesting. 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 There is no elder, in fact. Yeah. I mean, you m can risk getting one hit of the giant here and just go for the Ivory Knight. Um, that's probably fine. I mean, you, you might you might get you don't want to you don't want a pirate quality just this kind of a board. Interesting choices here. Um, I don't feel he needs to pick light of darkness here. I definitely think you want to pick consecration or um, well, especially because he has double equality. Um, co enter the Coliseum. Enter the Coliseum mm. versus I Druid. Like Druid normally has like maybe one big minion. Yeah, they normally have two things on board, so it's kind of like an uh, do much. assassinate maybe on best on yeah. the, on the weakest minion on board. So yeah, and consecration works with equality that he has in hand, so it should be fine. Uh, still think like Life Coach wants to continue here a little bit. Uh, I think the War Hero Power is pretty solid here by killing, clearing off the Ulderman, going for A to the face. You don't want to trade this. What one of the things that is important to do against the uh, Paladin now is just don't trade sometimes. If you have the better board and they have to equality content, well, why do you then want to trade? You also want to uh, pressure them so that you deal damage and uh, they have to deal with your board, heal at the same time, and can't play combo pieces. So if you if they have to do three times at the same time, you might get a better chance to win. Plus, you know, Yorks are on in the end. Like you want to have your opponent as low as possible when you play Yorks are on. It's interesting play that can to be can be made here is actually going for the um, equality Eldor. Uh, then go with the pyro. Then we'll go with the coin, and you kind of get like equality uh, pyro mass. Yeah, equality pyro coin, right? Okay. Uh, not play first equality. Yes. And then, and then you go with the minions, and then you go for the coin to gain that 
throw out of Echo. I don't know if it's like that needed. I, all pr I also like the equality calls here because it's just a little bit less cards you play. You don't feel the need of the cycle that badly with an Vigil in hand, with the uh, Acolyte in hand, with the Before Knight in hand. Plus, honestly, this is the first giant second edition of Wars if you already dealt with mm -hmm. like three big creatures in Life Coach's deck, so you feel okay using the equality right now. Plus, you, you do have, two, what, two Aldors in your deck? So, like, there is one more giant you have to deal with, and that's basically it. Maybe Yoxeron if he stays True. Hmm. So, Lifecoach can now go for develop the board more with the uh, Force of Nature innervating out the hero power. Yeah. But I definitely like, I mean, we saw the Consecration. He also saw it was probably from the, um, from the Ivory Knight. Can still not say too much. There are always two in the deck. But this will open... Mm -hmm. An interesting play with Pyromancer, Coin, maybe uh, Vigil. <laughs> There's <laughs> the Elder right after the double giant, <laughs> <laughs> or after the giant and the double bar. Well, this means that maybe you can use Equality here, because you will have Elder for the giant in the future, so it's not bad. Yeah, you can go also with uh, Equality. Let Pyro me. also make the Vigil really cheap. Still a little bit tricky. I mean, this is already the second equality now. Definitely not too happy about that. He goes for just the coin. Yeah. And I guess hero power. Uh, uh, Vigil is not too bad here. Well, Vigil will draw you three cards and kill your own Pyro Monster. Yeah. And you can cast it for one. But the problem is now, after using both of your equalities, you will not get a Vigil that easily for this cheap you draw that three cards by killing in three one that dies I otherwise to the hero power so like i will still prefer it yeah i, I still like the visual yeah. thing yeah six so disagrees he just wants the one one he feels like he wants to have some damage on board because it's also important in the murloc deck you want to deal damage you want to be aggressive uh if you don't draw uh, all the murlocs specifically because we haven't seen any murlocs yet. that's why i'd like to draw because I want to draw the Murlocs. We oh, have, uh, makes uh, sense. <laughs> so to like get them at least, because we have to double anything can happen. But yeah, with the four unite, there's still ways to pick up some, uh, maybe some decent clear. Yes, like acolyte of pain as well. Uh, Life coach getting a little bit of a like dead hand here. I was even thinking of picking a minion here. Yeah, this I is like is this the moment yeah. of minion? This is actually a moment of minion. And Life coach going and scenarios. it gets scenarios. Wow. Yeah, I don't think we picked <laughs> even on the ice rage here. With this <laughs> hand, with this amount of mana, you can spend. Yeah. Each scenario gets pretty strong in the deck. Definitely. That's not a big minion. You've seen double equality. So mm -hmm. from Sixo's perspective, it was pretty clear of what minions have been played. But now Scenarius is a dangerous guy. No one. Mm, so Sixo is pretty able to trade. Uh, by just trading the Acolyte, the 1-1 one, one in, um, you already gain your Fidgel for 2 mana. It's pretty reasonable to do, and I think that's a good starter for of this deck, uh, of this turn at least. You also get a card as well? You so get the Acolyte card and you get the... Yeah, well I will for sure consider a Vigil for 2 mana. I already... Or like, it can get a little bit clunky now with the, uh, the good ways of removing being used, and it still fits what the curve pretty well with going uh, for the Peace uh, Keeper and the on the... Scenarios with together with like a war leader uh, playing eight mana, but yeah, that's pretty fine for this turn, I would say. And you you at least develop your first murloc now. Yeah, I agree with this. Um, is there anything else like you you, you, you kind of uh, want to alter the five eight, right? Yeah, you can alter the two two but to get an extra draw, but I feel we have enough ways to do it. Okay, wants to get that one extra draw in here. Okay. Maybe not planning on Vigil then and playing the six mana with uh, the second Elder and the War Leader. What definitely well, he can still here. play the Vigil and the second Elder this turn. But three mana probably is like... I, I really want to play the... Yeah, I like this. I don't feel... I really want to play this Elder still. I'm pretty solid. Just a little bit more proactive here on the board. Especially because Dread is running out of cards at the moment. Yeah, and uh, now there's like uh, missing a little bit the draw here with like Norris or Ezra Drakes, but never. Now it's just a little bit all the spells together and can sometimes be great, but uh, when you have to be the proactive player, like against the Paladin, it you can run just out of cards a little bit faster. Yeah, it's kind of tough. So do you just go into mm -hmm. trading or do you just go into face damage? <laughs> if you if you go into trading, you can kill the one one with. Um, with the 1-8 maybe, or like hero power, and then you can, or like with the 1-8 and then yeah. Feral Rage, one of the Aldors. It's a really awkward board to be honest, or the like in hand with nothing is, you don't even want to do anything, but you. 
It's so awkward because with the mulch you're aiming for Tyrion or Ragnaros. Like you don't want the mulch. Yeah, Tyrion. I was also like, you probably still kill this Murloc off. You're not gonna burst him down any soon. It will either also come like an Tyrion or Ragnaros. So you really have to hope you're gonna draw in something uh, strong soon. Well, Yorkstone is still your best card. Uh, we haven't seen that many spells though because Life Coach was mostly playing minions. But yeah, 6 still in a good position. There is the Ragnaros Light Lord that can get hit by Mulch. But 6 doesn't really have to go for that yet. Yeah, but it's also great to develop maybe an 8 8. You can go for the 4 Knight, look for stuff. I'm fine with Ivory Knight and Merlock War Leader this turn. First, Ivory Knight, see what's up. Hmm. Oh, he goes for Ragnaros anyway. Okay, so he he hopes there is no mulch in the hand. Or even if there is a mulch, he's still in a good position. Yeah, I mean, it heals you pretty strong. You Unless it an heals the on free board. one. That's true, but I don't think he's too sad about it here. Yeah, he's fine. Another living uh, risk. Oh. That's <laughs> not what you're looking for at turn 10 or turn 12 or something like. Hey, at least you can kill the 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah, well... Something. Uh, it would be nice if you could push then or something, not just give him a card and pass the turn yourself. Doomsayer. Oh, wow. That's well, a third Doomsayer. <laughs> well, he's ahead, so it's not the yeah, best. Yeah, it's actually not doing anything. Well, normally it is a card you run in the deck, so. It might be useful if you want to set up a nice anything. Just play Doomsayer on a board that's cool, and then if it triggers, just anything and win next turn. But so far. 6-0 is in a good position here. That poor Feral Rage just can't do anything. Consecration. I guess you just build up the board here. Like, yeah. whatever. I guess the Ivory Knight and Murloc are just fine. I'll we'll probably start with the Ivory Knight and see if you get something. You can go for a uh, 4 mana Vigil, but it's normally not worth it to do it for 4 mana. You can pick up the second one here. I guess there is not much need to. Well, there's also not me maybe not much need to draw. Mm -hmm. um, you can consider going picking defensive heal, but I... Holy Light? Yeah, but I don't see much... I mean, the Vigil, oh. the vigil is kind of the same because you already restore 5 right. health directly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I just don't see uh, any reason to not pick the Vigil here. Me too. Unless, like, he's super long cards and then we'll never play Vigil, okay. but... So now yeah. Sixo really wants to draw one of his blue gills. There is the first one to like combine it together with the war leader, setting up maybe a decent anything can happen. Yeah, he will not even need the second blue gill, right? Like with this one blue gill, it was it is enough to just like double anything afterwards and be happy about yeah, it. Yeah, it will be, and it looks also like that uh, life coach is gonna give him that time to go for it. It's not because he wants to, but just doesn't get anything on board and just not getting any card or getting like that yog that can maybe swing things around here. Is Life Coach thinking about Feral Rage the four? Like, so Violet Teacher, Feral Rage the four four. You yeah, get a one one. Prob probably. I mean, maybe he's shortly thinking of a defensive play with a Feral Rage for eight armor. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna. We well, only just seen one war leader so far, so that anything can happen is only one war leader. It's just not doing much. Face I'm going face, praying, praying for to draw a uh, either a York. Or uh, yeah, it is a defensive play. Why do you think a defensive play is better than just uh, to gain time? And you just hope for something to happen that you can also draw your game, that you don't die in two turns on board already. Because at 16 and there is seven on board, yeah, well, uh, it's not gonna stay that long. So basically, playing to your outs, which is your surround at this point. So for 6 0, he can go for the blue guild and wool leader to have them on board and. Um, Enhance his own uh, anything. Yeah, it's like you can consider trading here. Yeah, I mean, you see Andrew being out of cards, so what can this teacher really do? Once there comes a Norris, yes, it can develop a little. You still have good ways with the consecrations. The I will consecrate and trade my blue gill, maybe. Yeah, also, I will probably maybe trade it, make the greedy trade here with the 4 4. Oh, even that greedy? Yeah. Because Druid just has nothing in hand. Oh. I don't see the reason to make the 3-3 three, three over the 4-4. Four, four. You can do it with the blue guild. But I like that. I don't mind that. But yeah, the 3-3 three, three seems a little strange when you can also do it with the 4-4 four, four and save a minion. Well, Arc this giant is going to be cheap. That's something for sure. 
and he can play it this turn. Is it enough damage to win the game, though? Zero mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. So <laughs> if Sixo goes for it, anything can happen, and it deals just four more damage. So at the moment, we have 11 <laughs> plus 4, 15. <laughs> thing is, there is not one Murloc that died at all. So it's there are Murlocs on board, but it's not going to spam anything yet. Well, so. there is one Murloc that died. So it actually brings up the War Leader. Oh, the War Leader. Yeah, yeah. You increase so it by So it's plus two. 4. So he is one damage of yeah. lethal. Okay, yeah, that's true. The 15 damage. If he would actually kill that thing with the blue gill you always if you want to do it you still trade your blue gill first in to gain the second mm. one and then you can also make the 4-4 four four trade into the giant so i actually really like it uh yeah, you just go for the anything you gain three murlocs by attacking here and you make the trade on board and your murlocs keep on board setting up lethal yeah it's 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 decent oh he's going for the visual instead why? Mm. So, well, he doesn't have lethal anyway, so basically... No, but you put, you want, you win, but your s the first anything normally never wins. You want to yeah. set up the second. You're not really needing your four Fort Murloc here at all. How scared are you of Yogg's run next turn? <laughs> yeah, well, you're always scared of Yogg, <laughs> but I guess it shouldn't kill you at 24 here. So it shouldn't, and you will have and an anything that wins yeah, the game. Yeah, I really, I think it's shot. So he goes for anything. Okay, summons two Murlocs that died, which means that how many Murlocs died this game? Uh, still if still two. If still these two. Three, three will die, it will be five. And you... Um, Unless they vanish. Yeah. You will get And there we go. Can it's we see a vanish? Or not Life yet. coach not roping this one at all. <laughs> and it's uh, important because you have to play Yogg as fast as possible. But there were not that many spells. Healing touch, healing the Yogg does nothing. That kills a Murloc. Yeah, but something like Counterspell has to come here to, like, Ooh. putting him out of this situation and clear the board still. A little bit dead cards here all. Well, that definitely doesn't help you when you damage your own face. Yeah, that's almost it, I think. Ooh. <laughs> and there were actually more spells than I thought. Well, the Giants were already zero mana, so... Okay, oh, well, at Hex? least the clear Hex is happening bad. now, but yeah. There is not any hunter secret that can stop and anything can happen, right? Uh, if you get misdirection and the good, if it's like it super kills your other bluegill <laughs> warrior <laughs> exactly. or something, your bluegill kills your bluegill. It can be awkward. Yeah. Well, but I see the second one is still the able to attack, so I guess it didn't hit. It, it didn't. So yeah. six of finally after all those games taking one game and defeating the druid. So we'll see if Murlocs will be enough to carry him, because this is an elimination match. Whoever loses this is out of the tournament. Yes, and uh, well, there are decent matchups still for him left for the uh, Paladin. Now with the Druid being out, I definitely think there are um, ways for him to do it, but it's still going to be... You see how uh, slow the Paladin has to take the games here, and yeah. um, it's not going to be just easy to 3-0 uh, here, but definitely a good start now with putting the Druid away. You have to believe. You have mm -hmm. to believe in your skills and the heart of the cards, and... Uh, Paladin is a solid deck. Yeah. It's, it's actually with all this draw. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very solid combo deck, and uh, I've played it on ladder a lot. It, it just works. And sometimes even in the bad... Like, are there any super bad matchups? I think the, like, the tempo match is definitely not that good. I feel, just feel that that is in a really close one. I, I don't favor... I, I, I don't favor normally any of the thing. I think the or version is a little fast, but might be nice. And at, the, at some point, you're going to be at 15 lives, or maybe 20, and... You feel that you kind of want to heal or make that yeah. equality play, and there are spells at the late end of the game, and it can get a little bit tricky. Also, water elementals, just stopping the true silver sometimes. It's not in 3 6, it's only in 3 6. It but can go either if way. If it keeps pushing, it can be a little problematic. But you can you can stop it as well. Like yeah, if you have doomsayers. good doomsayers in the very beginning, then just mm -hmm. go with the weapons unanswered, then you have equality pyromancer, and then suddenly we're at turn 8 when you play Tyrion, Ragnaros, Lightlord, and, and mm -hmm. Tempo Mage just has to fireball those yeah. big guys instead of your face. Also, the warrior that Life Coach uh, had. Probably not the deck uh, that is any good against the Spell. In the deck uh, that Life Purchase is running is not good at all the late game to make it really good against uh, a more aggressive class. Agro, so yeah. it doesn't play in Wreck or something that is really good uh, against uh, Paladin. So if Paladin stops uh, the Dragon Warrior early, then Life Coach will just run out of steam. But yes. he still has the early game of the Dragon Warrior, mm -hmm. so he might actually be fast enough. I think the Dragon Warrior is for sure unfavored. Uh, pretty hard against Peldin. This one okay. I think is going to be close. So this is going to be the, an, an important match for the series. So you are playing one bubbling book or two? Uh, two bubbling books. Two bubbling books yeah. and uh, how many tomes, Kabbalist tomes? Zero. Zero tomes. Two yeah. bubbling books, zero tomes. Mm -hmm. Antonidas? 
No end tonight. It's Not really tonight. a more, um, a little bit more minion based with the water elementals placed. The uh, um, uh, faceless summoner as okay. an uh, six drop. One off. Um, a one off. Yes, and. Just playing uh, still like a portal, a uh, flame strike probably not going to help in this match. But I think the flame strike is the only really dead card for a uh, life coach. So a lot of things that he can just do do during this game. This opening from six zero is super good. Mm, yeah, it's good. Might be a little bit that you need gonna run out of steam. But the true vigil, sil right? true okay. silver is so important. Like yeah. if you can stop that flame waker, you're fine uh, normally. So that's one of the Really important cards there for six. So Doomsday also really, really good, of course. How do you like the Babbling Book? Oh, that's a third fireball just well, like that. Well, if, if Babbling Book just gives you a decent card, then yeah, then it's just an extra 1-1. One, one. If it gives the, the spell that you would like to play three offs, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Go ahead. And it's just a, like a 1-1 one, one that's annoying. It just deals damage. You have to do something about it most of the time. and sometimes helps to kill the Doomsayer and stuff. So I really like the card. I think it really fits. Mm, already a little bit rough hit turn here for uh, Life Coach to like, do you want to go with the Apprentice with the image? Uh, no really reason to play the image just on this turn because you're scared of a weapon. But uh, if you want to like handle a Doomsayer turn two, if you plan on that, you have to play Apprentice now so you can fireball the Doomsayer the right after. Would you be scared about the Bluegill? Because normally Mirror yeah. Image doesn't do anything. I think there are two cards you want. You play around here by just going image. You play around Doomsayer, also recently, and you play around Blue Girl. I think you should for sure play the image here to not give this Blue Girl this good of a trade. It's gonna really hurt Life Coach, and I think it might even now realize it a little bit after seeing the trade happen. Yeah, normally you don't think about Blue Girl being something aggressive. Like most of the time, people just mulligan it away. And especially in well the last game. Well, against Mage, I don't mind keeping it because of the 3 Exactly, <laughs> there is the 3 twos you want to, mm -hmm. to kill. But like last game, the Rolox showed up only super late as the, as the win condition. Yeah, and here I just don't like the Flame Waker too much because of it. It runs so hard into True Silver and such a good card for this matchup. But we haven't even seen True Silver last, last game, right? So you might yeah. hope they have to be like risk, the risky play. Uh, no well, way. we know the deck list. So and well, I'm yeah, I know sure. it's in the deck, right? But then... You might think, maybe he yeah. doesn't have it again. But if you, if you see there were two or three cards being kept, uh, True Silver is like the card to keep. So so if, you've, if you're if you afraid of the coin True Silver, you go Cult Sorcerer and Mirror Image Yeah, suddenly. but then it runs also into... Consecration. <laughs> but Coin Consecration feels a little bit better than Coin True Silver. Yeah, I guess because even if there's like Coin Consecration, you just play Water Elemental and you will stop the, the weapons. I don't know why... Life Coach want to hold so badly on this image. Well, the blue gill is gone, so why would yeah. you ca why would you really cast it? True silver again? Yeah, it's the way like image is so amazing to stop the weapons. And the weapon that comes from the the first weapon that comes normally this turn or next turn. I think he may be thinking about just playing flame waker later and tr protecting with with mirror image and getting the value. Out of it, and he but now there now are already two turns happening for Life Coach where he would have loved to have the image on board. I feel, yeah, and it's not a good card in this matchup. Like, oh, I have to keep it for turn 10 to stop the Ash anything, <laughs> to stop that <laughs> anything can happen or whatever. Like, yeah, you're right. I don't think it goes that way too bad. Well, he's going to play it this turn, yeah. hopefully, because he wants to stop the, the attack. Yeah, there. now I mean, now you can even consider the elemental. You can. I'm all in mind elemental I here. Wonder. I don't think this is. I like elemental as well. I don't think you have enough spells because, like, even if you go for flame waker mirror image, you don't have a real follow up on turn five. So you still play elemental on turn also five. Also, turn four is just if there is a cons, there will be the cons. Yeah. Eyes on curve. What other elemental feels also it stops this through silver a little. It's not that at two HP it's gonna be that weak. And like Sixo will not be happy to attack with the True Silver into War Elemental because it doesn't achieve much. And if it doesn't, he, if he doesn't attack, he just block the attack. Next okay. turn, putting the pressure on here. Uh, Flame Maker definitely a minion you really want to just uh, trade with. But Sixo not having any way of doing it, and yeah, that's going to be a little annoying. I think the double Doomsayer has to uh, be played here and. 
And this means that Life Coach will either lose the board or try to kill it. Is there yeah. even a possibility to kill uh, those guys? That, that yeah, might have been really. like with some spell damage and you play like Arcane Blast for cheap or you go Missiles, but does a lot. But Not then, in hand. Then you consider, is that even worth it? To do yeah. 14 <laughs> damage. <laughs> exactly. To deal 14 damage with defending 3 damage on your board. So I just even think if you had it, you might still not do it. And he doesn't have it. He doesn't have enough damage, mm -hmm. right? Because this is 6 plus, uh, plus 2, 8. And 11, and he would need to do 14. So this means pink face pass. Yeah, and this is kind of a situation where you are really looking um, for your solemn vigil here, just playing it. It's got if there will be one, uh, like life which I might even be considering like pinging his one one. Well, sometimes the f these plays are fine, uh, but here there are six minions on board, so it will still be six mana. But there are t there are times that I like you don't make your dude or you don't make your totem. You or try to counter it. Or you no still trade if there will be in one month from the pel, and you still trade it to like make the solemn vigil happen for four more mana than it's supposed to be. Oh, he's going super aggressive, oh, fireballing wow. the face right now, even. So he feels like he he wanted to get also the flame waker value. I think he it's uh, he really wants to uh, do something with his mana. That's more that's the feeling I have. It's a tempo mage uh. in a way, so you kind of want to make those tempo plays. So Sixo doesn't have the heal. Uh, he only has the heal with the weapon. Just um, This kind of play also saves, I think, to Sixo a little bit from, I have more spells in hand. I so have more from, damage. Uh, yeah. Make that defensive play, and then I play my minions again. Well, Sixo doesn't really have a choice mm. here. War Leader and uh, either 1-1 one one or Pyromancer. Yeah, well, this is normally not... The way you want to play the Pyromancer, I think the 1-1 one one is just more than solid. It's not 14 lives that probably made with six, so going for the Pyromancer indeed. Yeah, he's going for the Pyromancer to have more leverage with regards to um, the power on board. And then if you expect Summoner, you might use the Pyromancer as well. And even Pyromancer is a target, so that if there's something to, to deal damage, mm -hmm. if it's not an Arcane Blast, maybe Frostbolt into Pyromancer will also save damage. So here, the yeah, I guess you can play the face of summoner. It's just all mm. you have to, possibly. And that's a silver war golem, like a standard for free. There are better Ooh. cards. Pretty decent pickup here. Good draw. Mm, uh, forbidden healing. So if you pick a zero mana card, what will <laughs> that be? <laughs> well, you obviously tell your opponent what it is. But then, is it worth to get a second Consecration? You can also think of Consecration here, because the value game is getting a little close. Oh, he just gets instant Ooh. instant health. Because this will allow him to actually clear the board. I don't know about this pickup, so he wants to be proactive against the deck. It is probably because of what you said. He feels like there is more damage in hand. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that fireball signaled. That's, that's why he goes for immediate health. Yeah, but then yeah, then forbidden healing. Yeah, and it's it's a little bit strange to pick forbidden healing because you can already get the hel half of the heal by picking another card a little. Yeah. In the way, but for free. But yeah, the forbidden just having more reach later in the game. Plus, this is minions. Mm -hmm. Those are minions that are going to trade into other other minions. So board is also important here. Okay. So we have a possible Aldor Consecration to clear yeah. the board. I don't like the Wild Pyro with the Darkness here. It will be a little bit sad <laughs> for the dudes to like <laughs> be that able to Stand against Darkness. Uh, <laughs> it's like, like the time you play uh, like your Pyro into your muster and then realize <laughs> like, oh yeah, that combo is not that good at all, right? Whoops! <laughs> Sometimes you want, want it to counter like the mirror match. How can I kill these one ones? Oh, I can put the pyro in, but yeah, there are not that spells to combine it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but still, we we have two murlocs that died, so anything can happen. Does something. Sixo is 18. He has the board. There is the fireball and the portal, so there that is some damage. Portal actually pretty decent here. Um, together with the mana worm trading the three three and summon an um. Five cost minion is That's not bad because the horse will be still frozen next yeah, turn. Yeah, that's yeah, that's why I really like what it. To do? So what basically mana worm portal into the free free. You also like you cannot really portal anything else here because then the mana worm gets covered directly by the Eldor. Yeah. It's only bad. three cards in hand, I mean Yeah, sure, I don't mind it. It can even actually set up lethal if there comes a little bit of an 
a uh, strong attack minion out of the portal with, together with the mana room with the mm. five ball in hand if you get on solid draw there with ex additional damage sure and there is right now no way to deal with this mana worm mm -hmm. for six so he will need to draw into something that will help him so i definitely like mana worm portal not even knowing Sixo's hand it's still like a very aggressive like you you, you build up a board and you get board advantage so life coach decides that that might be, in fact, the best play. No, not really. He okay. goes for a 3 2 instead. It might allow more plays. Oh, okay, that's a good five, one. It's a good 5 6, yeah. As long as they don't have Battle Cries, they're normally pretty solid in uh, strength. And 6 is something from the Savory Knight, something to deal with this 5 6. Plus, re attack does not work. He can heal himself for. <laughs> yeah, well, the idea. Blessed Champion heals him for more, <laughs> actually, again. Yeah, but I think you pick the healing uh, with the potential of healing next turn, then, like... I don't know, it's a little bit weak to pick the Forbidden Healing here, I feel. Would he be just dead? He'll be 18, this is uh, 8 plus... Uh, there are ways to die there. 12? Oh. That's 21 damage? If there would have been the Mana Worm on board, um, it, the Mana Worm would gain 4 attack, and that would not be enough. That's a third fireball, what? How did you get that? Babbling book. Did some good stuff. Well, if Sixo gets Forbidden Healing, he's just dead. But five health was enough. <laughs> so now, <laughs> what? Dude. So it's 21, like, do we go 21 to face? Like, you know, anything can happen will not be cast next turn. Like, the worst thing can, that can happen is what, like... There are just no Ragnaros. reasons to fireball here, right? What are the reasons? To stay mana effective a yeah. little, or...? Well, maybe one fireball. I mean, you can play the whole hand, and then you get a solid mana worm. You go face. You ping maybe the one one away. I don't mind it. I don't think you are like you know. Now there are two cards in the hand for five mana. I, I would actually expect it being a vigil. Like it's one of the more common cards to pick up there. But yeah, I mean, if you play the mana worm, you definitely want to do it. I feel you wanna. Maybe you don't want to spoiler too much, but um, I think one is fine. If you get um, wh what can you get that you want to play? Yorks around. Ooh, place a control game. Don't like this. Oh, it's not good. I really don't like this. He actually managed to kill the 4 3 as well. No. No, like he roped. I think he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> and now he quality because the yeah, he quality is so good. Playing this kind of game against a paladin that there has so many ways of doing good removal or uh, decreasing your attacks of the minions, I don't think it's anything you should ever consider, especially not on cards like yeah. the Warrior Knight. It was wasted damage. That 4-4 would die anyway. And right now 6 is actually able to come back. Arcane yeah, Intellect. but you mean, I mean, I think 6 damage extra in the face. Cold, uh, cold turn out being super big. And I think Life Coach is just slow, slowly realizing it here that... Another yeah, Fireball would be, be good. Yeah, but of, if the Fireball will be here in phase, it will just be lethal this turn normally. Well, not enough mana, but overall... Yeah, but at 9, if you have like the double missiles here, the turn 10, but only two cards, I mean... But there is no fourth fireball. You know there is another five mana card in the hand, but it's like no heal at all. If there is a forbidden healing next next turn for six, so like Ragnaros... Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is also a chance for the Bubbling Book to, give, to get like a fourth fireball or Pyro, Pyroblast. Belief in the bubble. Yeah, good. life coach playing it really control this uh, for the control this game and so matchups that is nice, but Paladin is so good at like handling it. Oh, what? Yeah, well, that might be good actually because Frostbolt is lethal uh. next turn. That was not. Yeah, but terrible. I mean, what re life coach is realizing now is, what did I just play <laughs> on a minion there, <laughs> the turn before? All right, so Frostbolt is lethal. Um, Azure Drake is close. I mean, it's okay, draw. You <laughs> keep going the cycle. There are more things to pick up here. I can blast can deal with the Murloc. You need to, you need to ping face, right? It doesn't matter too much. Uh, fireball has a one spell damage now, but if you don't want to like spoiler that you have a fireball, um, you don't gain any outs anymore with like having the double missiles already being played. I think, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you can pick the two one. I mean, it's. The yeah, you still, really you, still nice. you still win the game if you get the Frostbolt. I just turn. like the thing here because you, there's only three attack on board and it doesn't directly cover the Ezra Drake. Uh, doubling an <laughs> and dude's attack is not 
doubling too much. <laughs> just doubling. <laughs> a, so I don't think we will say that. Being but Alder can get doubled, so maybe that will work. And suddenly with the True Silver Champion, actually 6-0 is escaping the Frostbolt mm -hmm. lethal. Well, there's plus frost is still being lethal here now. Um, no, it's oh no, like no, it's if it's he makes dead. the trade, I was yeah, exactly. if he wanted to go face there, but the trade now playing perfectly around it here. And that's uh, an arcane oh, intellect, so he he's still he's through the game. <laughs> we are still in. You can still oh, bubbling book. book and then frostbolt. Oh, oh man, I don't know, like. Well, Frostballing face is just super strong next turn, actually, but stopping this two silver. You will get to 12. Yeah, you have Frostballing. Oh, yeah. extra damage. That's more, even more damage, yeah. Oh, I think you can just Fireball Frostbolt the face now. Fireball Frostbolt face Frostbolt face seems to be, like, really strong by just stopping the true silver. It's also a lethal threat. Like, this true silver can be, like, adding additional damage to the deck. Yeah, that's true. If we, Well, if you don't Frostball, you might actually... Die. Yeah, I mean, there, are, the there is 11 now uh, from the Paladin side by just Frostbolting, but it's just good by stopping the 2 heal. It also stops the 4 attack, but gets pretty... So he needs Ragnaros, he needs Forbidden Healing. <laughs> or <laughs> anyf any anything can happen, does win the game? Yeah. It's 3, well, 4, Ragnaros, 5, 6, 7. Ragnaros is also gonna be good. Uh, I think you also get out of range with Ragnaros. Yeah, Ragnaros, <sighs> Forbidden Healing. Uh, anything can what happen. What's he pinging here? Like because of Ragnaros. Because of Ragnaros. Oh, because of Ragnaros. Yeah, because of Ragnaros. But uh, is this enough? So you can double the six. attack of the six, seven, eight, it's nine. It's two off. I count. Uh, six. Plus three. Yeah, it's twelve. So it's yep. Yeah. And that seems that's it. That <laughs> seems that's it. <laughs> so oh, what a game! Yeah, a life coach. Amazing. Life coach. Look at life coach. He's so sad. <laughs> yeah, like but I think he just. Uh, also realized there oh, where things realized stood. Right now. I think they were realizing is that he get pretty good away here by just still kind of I feel kind of stealing the victory here away. Yep. And yeah. Not punished for sure. Yeah. And well, uh, adding an extra fireball and a dragon to your deck. Babbling Does book. Yeah, the babbling book. Just doing pretty solid work here. And this means that Sixo is eliminated from the tournament and Knife Coach still survives. He yeah. is going to live to play another match at least. Yeah. Well, it was a really strong German fight going on here. Uh, yeah. I think a really nice series. Also interesting to see like a totally different pick and ban phase. And yeah, first getting two games in with the Druids. Uh, Sixo getting back there with the Paladin. And yeah, Life Forge can end it here with the Temple Mage. I also really like that we have those Karazhan cards actually mm -hmm. mattering. Like Ivory Knights being really good, Babbling mm -hmm. Book. Lothar, what do you... F uh, well, Lothar. Lothar? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll take that as I a compliment. Like, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> Why so handsome? Okay. Raven. Yeah, I mean, the, the series was uh, kind of cool overall, even though it did look like Life Coach was going to run away with it initially. 6 -0 did fight back, but that, that last game was just insane to me. Like, that was so tense. And then I think the, de the decision with the, the fireball earlier on was kind of, you know, I was sat with all the players and like, do you not just go face or at least save it for face or some way? But we saw it. Uh, well, we'll see it coming up, no doubt, as we go with the, the best plays of the match. Presented by HP, of course, the sponsor of this tournament. And uh, we see this feels like a long time ago. Yeah. This feels like a, a, almost really, like a previous series. This game went really fast. Yeah. yeah. Super fast. Yeah, I think uh, after Live Coach went like 2 0 up, everything slowed down, you know. Mm. It's kind of crazy, but we see you know a pretty uh, straightforward game overall. You know, live coach never really been under too much pressure, and I was at this point starting to think, oh no, Druid's gonna do it again. You know, the lack of the Druid ban is gonna really uh, push out the game here. It's funny how life coach in this match had to be really aggressive overall, like playing those aggressive decks like Druid, like playing Druid, Druid aggressively here, and then uh, with the with the tempo mage also just making those aggressive plays. Only with Druid it seemed like he was a bit defensive just with the engine yeah. of war. I love that play by the way. The trade with the yeah. Gang boss to try and get the juggle on the Drake was insane. Yeah. It's a little bit of the deck what the Druid can do. Like you you have these matchups where you are the playmaker and you have the matchups where you are like just taking the hits and just mm -hmm. playing it a little bit more from behind. Here, I definitely call it being a little bit faster. <laughs> everything happens to, because yeah, I'm pretty sure like you had no clue what will happen here. Yeah, it's kind of crazy when you leave it that late, and then Yog plays so many spells, it's very difficult to keep up. But it was enough to pressure the game out. But then we see Sixo kind of you know return, uh, you know the fight a little bit with the Murloc Paladin, and this Yog was um, as far as I can recall, because it still feels like a while ago compared to the last match, uh, wasn't really the best Yog we've ever seen. I uh, didn't really get too much done, especially or uh, mainly because Sixo had the second anything anyway. So Yog would have had to have done some truly ridiculous things to really flip this game around. Yeah, this Yog wasn't. Great, yeah. but 6-0 had that game in the bag. Like most of the time, you just anything and win. 
so it was a good situation for six there. There, there, was, there was the moment with the misdirect that if the the um, the charge hit the other charge yeah, lock, the the it could have actually at least maybe not one one live coach the game, but you know what I mean, like really sort of made an impact on the, the following turns. And then we have this last game, the insane one, insane game. Definitely, there were some couple of uh, really important jobs for Sixo as well, getting that equality in the right uh, order, getting getting those Doomsayers early, and also the uh, the the pick from Sixo as well, where he picked the uh, well, he didn't pick the Forbidden Healing, just because he was scared of actually just getting killed. And um, obviously, though, the, the Forbidden Healing could have had an impact later on, but obviously he needed the five health at the time. So we and see now... And because of that. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, it's a really tough call to make at that point because you either take the initial health or the, 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 the huge power later on with the Forbidden Healing, but we see how close this game was. Every yeah. single draw was, inc like, incredibly tense. And we see the Dragon's Breath from the Babbling Book and also the Babbling Book giving uh, a fireball, fireball earlier on. So here is the winner, Life Coach. Congratulations. That was a, a pretty intense series overall. Oh, th thank you very much. And, and a very easy one. Uh, <laughs> I played like this. <laughs> So how in did the um, with, with the with the quick start to the that you had with the druid? Did you feel like you had it in, in the bag from there, or did you expect a few sort of like counter picks or at least six or to fight back a little bit with the Merlot Paladin? Were you worried about that deck coming up last? Um, well, not especially worried, but I was thinking that our lineups are pretty much equal, and uh, well, the first two matches, uh, the first two games, they were also insanely close, right? So I was very happy that I won each of them and. Uh, yeah, and I hope that the Anything won't win three games. And uh, yeah, that can also explain a little bit the second game because it's um, it's also quite of warm in here, so it's it's uh, difficult to focus through an entire mm -hmm. uh, five game series usually. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel you uh, you came out of the pick and ban phase? Because it's something that all the players have been talking about. Like a lot of the matches done before the games even start, in terms of just getting the pick and ban phase as right as you can possibly feel. Do you think it turned out well for you? Were you happy with it in the end, or did you feel a bit, you know, a bit off with what six O's picks and bans were versus you? Yeah, I think in general it's not too big of a deal. Like um, maybe if you do the pick and ban really good and your opponent does it very bad, mm -hmm. then you might squeeze a three to five percent per game so it's not decided yep. at all but in this case i th uh, i thought we were uh, starting off equally so yeah I, I have a couple of questions about that, that last game so you said you were obviously like tired and a bit distracted because it's warm but then like um you didn't play the mirror image uh, mirror images in the in the first first turn or yep. what you had yep. what you had what you had actually the um, uh, the free two why why holding it you were specifically trying to have it with the flame waker were you not playing around like bluegill or were you playing around Consecration later? Or like, what was the plan? Right, right. Yeah, maybe I can quickly, because in the last game that was very intense, so maybe I can walk you through this game. So uh, by turn two, I wa uh, was facing this uh, decision with the Mirror Entity, but I saw literally no reason not to play them turn two. I mean, that being said, I'm also not, let's say, a Tempo Mage expert, um, but um, I couldn't think of a card which would punish uh, not playing Mirror Im uh, Images, but I forgot about Blue Gill, so Blue Gill punished me. Next turn, uh, it was basically the same. <laughs> and I was thinking, yeah, well, it might be if I play Mirror entity, uh, Entities, then I walk uh, straight into Consecration, didn't play them, got punished again. <laughs> I was like, yeah, cool, not bad, bro. <laughs> and then I was, yeah, Flame Waker, I mean, sure, then Double Doomsayer, uh, that's history. And then at some point, I could burn face. I think the pink on the 1-1 one one was uh, correct, but the Fireball on the 4-4 four four was pretty bad. And uh, But, oh, no, that it followed by the other turn with the Mana Worm, right? So if I would have played the Mana Worm, yeah. I could have um, delivered one more damage. And I was really thinking, oh, 2-3 or 3-2, three, but I'm not sure whether I definitely played the Fireball. So let's go for the Sorceress mm -hmm. and next turn punished again. <laughs> 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 and then I was thinking, okay, well, I would just go for face and put him on one if I would have played it differently. But now I played like this, so what do I do now? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, okay, burn, burn, Fireball. And I wasn't sure till the last second uh, I burned 4-4 four, four and punished again. <laughs> so um, yeah, w whatever, guys, <laughs> really, whatever. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You wanted to fireball the second uh, Ivory Knight as well because, like, the, there was the rope thing. So. Complete nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Complete I, I was, nonsense. I the rope. The rope. It was happy you roped out yeah, there yeah. because I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. this straight shot <laughs> never happened. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking if I fireball the one, then I can also fireball the other. But no, 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 no it's, it's like it was super. Your uh, rope is your friend sometimes. Yeah, you know? of course, of course, the rope is my friend. You know me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, obviously nonsense. Just fireballing face and then just go yolo. That would have been it. But uh, yeah, in the end, it turned out to uh, work out kind of. And yeah, yeah. sometimes it does work out in that way so congratulations again live coach we'll let you go in there cool down and relax after that pretty intense series and we are going to go to a break while we prefer, uh, prepare the next match so don't go anywhere guys